Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Over the course of the last couple of days, we've had some rather funny uh, comic videos, uh, particularly as regards to I am not Starfire, uh, but we've got to kind of make it a little bit uh, more serious now. And this video is going to go on for as long as it's going to go on, I'm afraid, because uh, uh, there's stuff that needs to be, to be gone through uh, for context uh, and also because uh, I, got, I got a fair bit to say we're all people virtually everyone who's going to watch this video is going to be aware of the the absolute comic book legend frank miller the dark knight returns 300 sin city uh he he's he is a legend there's no other way to describe him no other way uh frank miller has been uh cancelled let's just go there he's been kicked out of a a upcoming comic convention um because of a serial victim which i'm going to go through right now this is a piece that was written by somebody called zainab akhtar and this comes from a, a video uh by just some guy uh from 2017 october 2017 and um, before i go into it i just got to say uh please swing by just some guy's channel and hit that subscribe button because uh this guy should be on about 400,000 500,000 subscribers he's absolutely uh incredible uh he's insanely smart his takes are just uh brilliant um i dream of being as good as this guy i dream of it so please go over to his channel show him some love he's the best so she wrote this in 2017 after attending uh a comic convention now before i even begin i want to make one thing very clear zaina bakhtar lives in the uk she lives in leeds a built-up metropolitan area in west yorkshire the city of Leeds. And I say that because what she's going to write now is disingenuous as the day is long. Foremostly, my whole experience was colored by people's reaction towards me. Kendall and the Lake District by large is a very white middle class region. Correct. Correct. Because she lives in the UK, she most likely knows what the breakdown of uh, ethnicity is in the UK. For you guys that don't know out there, the UK is made up of approximately 85 to 87 and a half ish percent white British. The remaining 15, 12 and a half percent are the, are the minorities. Britain is a predominantly white country. She lives in it. She knows this. And living herself in Leeds, which is a big built-up metropolitan city, she'll also know that you'll find the, the greatest uh, diversity within these metropolitan areas. And when you go out into the country, when you go out into the sticks, because the Lake District is a beautiful part of britain beautiful and it's not built up you know there's no massive city there no it's hills it's lakes it's villages it's absolutely gorgeous so she'll know the more that you kind of go into those areas the more you kind of get your middle class white people so she acts as if this is strange or new or weird and it's not We saw, I think, maybe six people of color in the time we were there. Yes, I counted. Well, that's just weird. That's just weird for a start. Why would you do that? You understand the makeup of Britain. You understand the, the breakdown of Britain. And you understand when you go out into the rural areas, what you're most likely going to come across. 
So this is done for no other reason than to sensationalize and to support what would be her claim of victimhood. Because it's always nice to hide behind the shield of diversity, which, of course, a lot of these bitter cowards do. <clears throat> and the festival being located in the town centre on a Saturday with bright, dry weather was busy, as was the surrounding area. I got stared at a lot. And if you're visibly an ethnic minority, you will instantly understand the hostile, open, up and down hard stares of which I speak. Now, Zainab is Muslim. She dresses up in her garb. Uh, and when you're out in the you know, in rural Britain, uh, where it's not most likely seen by too many people, uh, yeah, you, you're probably going to get a few looks. How you interpret them is is completely different. Uh, you know, your hostile could just be somebody else's inquisitiveness. Your up and down stairs could be somebody simply checking out what you're wearing because it's not something they're used to seeing. But of course, you want to paint all this negatively because you're a victim. Because your whole shtick is victimhood. As we're going to very quickly see. Uh, some spunky people even preferred an eye-off contest. Yeah, whatever. We went into a fish and chip shop for lunch at one point, And people turned their chairs around to simply gawp bullshit bullshit she's been watching way too many uh films where it, where they probably in the far midwest in america or wherever where somebody comes in from the city and, and then everyone just like turns around oh don't like you city folk round here <coughs> now nah, I, I call absolute bullshit absolute bullshit on that it's all sensationalism it's 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 the fantasy of victimhood in somebody's mind then she says in the second paragraph and i'll paraphrase this that her experience in the town she links to the comic book convention because the comic book convention says that this is a community event and so because it's a community event it's part of the town and the town she perceives as staring at her and hostile so she she deems the same to the comic book convention itself <sighs> the organizers responded on twitter and i think this is somebody asking about what sh what she had said to about the festival and they said it's offensive we approached her twice to get her involved and she's refused as she holds a grudge from 2014. I could say more. Oh, so this person's already got history. Zaina Bakhtar already has history. Back in 2014. Now in 2017. I'm not escalating. I haven't responded to the mean comments nor confronted her. I need to protect myself from this. Who sounds like the victim here? Zainab and her, her embellished story of woe that she got looked at. <laughs> or the comic book convention that was under attack by somebody who was using their minority status as a weapon against them who was using the fact that it was in the Lake District in rural Britain, which is predominantly white, 87 odd percent white as a rule of thumb anyway, that was counting the number of black people or people of persons of color, I should say, herself. Who's the victim? Now I've just watched the whole uh, seasons of, of, of person of interest. Zainab Akhtar isn't the victim. She's the perpetrator here. 
she's the person that brought the war to them not vice versa so who's scared zainab nah she's writing she's writing fiction she's writing fiction of victimhood it's the comic book convention who are under attack who are scared because now they have to defend themselves for what somebody's perceived victimhood so we've got history from 2014 we've got blatant history from 2017 and here we are in 2021 guess who's back zainab's back back again to be another fucking victim hello everyone i'm sorry to inform you that short box and i will no longer be attending thought bubble festival this november i was invited as a guest in 2020 which rolled over to this year i have been excited to attend represent my authors and share our books with readers after almost two years of no conventions however as a proud muslim woman i cannot in good conscience attend a festival that deems it appropriate to invite and platform frank miller a person who is responsible for the propagation of abhorrent anti-muslim hate particularly via his work now the only thing that well i mean virtually everyone is drawing the the same conclusion here but it, it looks like she's talking about frank miller's book holy terror which came out in 2011 10 years ago 10 years ago now many of you will know this some of you may not but um frank miller who i believe is in recovery now uh, has been a, a, an alcoholic for a, a long time and most likely uh, an abuser of drugs as well. It, you know, let's just take that as a given as well. And um, he's 64 years old now and he looks like he's on death's door. And I don't say that lightly and I don't say that to sensationalize. He he literally does. Uh, he, he looks like... Uh, uh, a 95 year old man uh, he's he's hunched he's drawn um it's it's years of abuse that he's brought upon himself i'm not you know i'm no judge it's his life etc and you know th there's a when it comes to genius because i think the guy is a genius he's not just a legend he's he's a genius uh, the genius of, of what you do you know many people have their demons many people have their demons and they deal with them in different ways uh in just a couple of months time it's going to be the 20 20th anniversary of uh you know probably the most horrendous event on american soil and uh frank miller um when it happened couldn't reconcile what happened and so he he uh, contrived a, what was going to be a Batman story. It was going to be Batman, holy terror. Uh, and in this Batman story, Batman was going to go uh, and, and fight uh, Al-Qaeda who were coming to Gotham City. Uh, as the years rolled on, uh, it, it, it became less and less and, and essentially uh the the batman story was dropped and the association with dc comics was dropped so it no longer was a batman story so uh they they changed the protagonist to i believe what's called the the fixer and uh he was fighting and and brutally killing in this book uh al-qaeda terrorists now frank had a lot of anger he had a lot of resentment he had very strong feelings that had had built up because of those events in in september uh like many people did uh, your boy zach he he signed up like many americans did after that day a lot of 
men signed up uh, and women to to go to go and 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 defend their country. There was a a, a massive wave of of patriotism um, that that flowed that flowed for that period of time. Now I haven't read Holy Terror. I've ordered a copy today. Uh, my understanding is it's not a great book at all because it's very visceral. It's a, a mess of, of, of Frank Miller's um, uh, inability to, to, to deal with what he, he saw, uh, his drug addiction, his alcohol addiction. Uh, lots of factors came in. But of course... He got, he got criticism. I mean, he even joked himself that this book's probably going to offend everybody. He even joked before it came out. And, uh, of course, this has now been construed into, instead of uh, fighting against terrorists who are Muslim, because that's what Al-Qaeda is, uh, it's now been, been twisted into just anti-Muslim rhetoric. Which technically isn't the case but of course you know victimhood and victimhood so this is what it appears to be that they are referring to a book from 10 years ago where a, a highly alcoholic and most likely drugged up uh, uh frank miller who was suffering also from i don't you know i wouldn't say post-traumatic stress you know ptsd but he was suffering with his demons he was suffering with his demons about what happened that that day um wrote a very visceral book now uh this is how the convention responded how brave they are this is how the brave convention responded to her letter over the last 14 years, Thought Bubble has grown into an amazing community of comic creators and fans who we love, trust, and respect. We have let you down. <clears throat> uh, I put this through Google Translate. We have let you down. And it came back with, we are absolutely terrified that you're going to cancel us. Because... Uh, Zainab, you are the perpetrator. You are not the victim here. You are most definitely the perpetrator. And in our commitment to maintaining Thought Bubble as a safe space for all, we have fallen short. We exist to share the art form and its worlds with people. If any individual, group, or community feels uncomfortable or excluded from our show, then we've failed how can you feel uncomfortable about a man who just wrote a fucking book 10 years ago it's bullshit it's bullshit from head to toe that you could even remotely feel uncomfortable about that 10 year old book if you've even read it which most likely i reckon you've probably skimmed through a few pages And Frank Miller, the terrifying Frank Miller, who, like I said, unfortunately looks pretty much like a living zombie nowadays, uh, whose body is just absolutely annihilated through um, alcohol and drug abuse. He's no threat to anyone. This, again, is sensationalized bullshit by a professional bullshit merchant who's weaponizing her minority status to, to what? Well, I, I think to push her own bitter nature. Who, who, who is going to go to this convention because of her? F nobody. Who's going to go to this convention because of Frank Miller? Thousands of people. Thousands of people. They want to, to, to shake Frank's hand they want his signature on their dark night on their sin cities on their thrones whatever they want they want to touch they want to be near the legend that is frank miller they want to experience that and this 
woman who is a product of the school of Sarkeesian. And by that, I mean somebody who knows how to weaponize outrage has got Frank kicked out of the convention. We know that many of you are disappointed in us and have been expecting a comment on this before now. We are sorry for our silence while we've been trying to fix this. Frank Miller will not be attending Thought Bubble. They put it on a singular line as if they're going to get a round of applause. Well, guess what, dildos? She's still not coming. Because in your utter stupidity... Well, no, actually, I'll take that back. They're not, they're not stupid per se. They're frightened. They're frightened by her, not by Frank Miller. They're frightened by her because she's the one who is weaponizing her minority status to get away. And of course, if you don't bend the knee to that, it's cancellation time. You're going to get all of the istophobes thrown at you now. So who's... Who's really feeling uncomfortable here? Zainab? No. She's loving this. Relishing this. Frank? No. You. You squirmed. You squirmed. And and before I finish off, just to quickly go into the comments, all the people who they've done this for, all the people that thought they were placating because the stupidity comes in now when you bend the knee when you apologize they smell blood in the water and then they just attack they don't go oh thank you thank you for that apology all is forgiven oh uh, it's never enough it's not enough it's not enough. 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 It's not fucking enough. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's not enough. It will never be enough because it isn't legitimate. It's not genuine. It's fabricated outrage using and weaponizing her minority status. Frank is about as uh, much of a threat as a kitten. And they all know it. We are deeply sorry. Doesn't <laughs> Sorry doesn't cut it, sunshine. Sorry doesn't cut it. Particularly to those who we should be standing up for the most. Yeah. Frank Miller. We hope that you can give us the opportunity to make this better. No, you will never be given the opportunity to make it better. You are now, you have now had your head cut off when you bent your knee. They cut your head off. From here on in, your convention will be mud to them. Mud. You didn't respond quick enough. You should have done this before. Why did we even invite him? You are stupid as well as you are frightened. But that's... And this is the comic book industry, folks. This is the comic book industry. You'd think this is MI6. No, it's the funny book. It's the funny book brigade. Living in absolute terror at the people in the industry who will just turn around and weaponize their minority statuses to get what they want. And if they can't get what they want, they'll just tear it all down anyway. Because they know the buttons to press and they know the people who will just fall for it. I want to finish with Frank Miller. This is an article taken from 
The Guardian back in 2018, I believe, where they were interviewing Frank Miller, going through his history, and they bring up Holy Terror. They, they talk about his reactionary status, which, you know, you could attribute to his, his uh, addictions. Uh, they talk about his, um, his mindset at the time. Uh, so let's just go into this bit here. Miller's politics seem to be a bit more eccentric as his drawing did the same. In 2011, he published what he called a propaganda comic, Holy Terror, a gory tale of a caped superhero taking on Al-Qaeda. In one scene, the hero tortures a self-deleting bomber as his catwomanish girlfriend observes that she's okay with that. It's just one of the books many other uh, just one of the books many other acts of gory revenge on Frank Miller on Miller, what he calls Miller's Muslims no who stone and behead people and scream praise Allah readers and critics responded with bafflement and anger one critic called it one of the most appalling offensive and vindictive comics of all time let's just sc scroll here now does Frank have any regrets? So this is this is Frank now going to talk about it in 2018. I don't want to go back and start erasing books I did, he replies. I don't want to wipe out chapters of my own biography, but I'm not capable of that book again. So what he's, he's saying is, I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not, I've written it, I'm not going to pretend, you know, I'm not going to pretend it doesn't exist. Uh, he even says here, whenever I look at any of my work, uh, when I look, sorry, when I look at Holy Terror, which I really don't do that often, I can really feel the anger ripple out of the pages. There are places where it is bloodthirsty beyond belief. But I'm not capable of that book again. It came from a different time in Frank's life. It came from a very angry and not just that, uh, not just anger, but addiction. Where he was, he was venting because of the attack on his country. You, the book, you, you, you can call it this, that, and the other, but that is his home and that is what was attacked. And he's saying he's he's not capable of doing that again. He's he's exercised those demons. They're out of him. Three years ago, this article. A man that's had to deal with drug, alcohol, clearly his own demons as well, mentally. This isn't a person to be feared. This is a, this is a 64-year-old man who unfortunately who at the time was 61 here who looks like he's gone through hell and back. And maybe he has, maybe he has mentally, maybe he has with his addictions. But all of this all of this nonsense by Saina Bakhtar is 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 just pure and utter show. That's all it is. It's a serial whinger. 2014-2017-2021. Somebody who in those seven years I've never heard of this fucking person in my life. hasn't made any effect on the comic industry at all 
And in fact, the only time the name ever seems to come up is when they're complaining about a convention or trying to get somebody kicked out of one. Evil, nasty, vindictive, spiteful, and laughing as they hide behind their minority status as protection. They're not the victim. They're the perpetrator. Who is the victim here? Frank, partially, but he'll get over it. It's the thousands of people who are now no longer going to go to that convention. It's the thousands of people that this selfish person has robbed of seeing an actual comic book legend. Having maybe one of the final few chances to do so. Who knows? Robbed them of that with her own selfishness, her own bitterness, her own narcissism. The, the, the comic book industry, it, it, it's just filth. It's utter filth. And it's full of people like her. And that's why it's dead now. Dead. Oh, there we go. I think I've said all I need to say. I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and YouTube for live streaming links. They're in the description box down below. I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.